uh, I mean, Europe is falling. Are we going to see more savage cuts? Each day we think that uh, China and the resultant global slowdown has been adequately discounted. Doesn't appear to be. Well, good morning from London. Um, the slowdown, if anything, seems to be quickening. Uh, and, and gathering pace, and I think that is the concern, uh, is that there is no sign yet from any of the uh, fundamental economic indicators that we've hit a turning point. Uh, a good example of that overnight, if you look at the Hong Kong Purchasing Manager Index, uh, not only did that fall to a new cycle low, but if you look at the new orders from China component, um, that was the lowest, I think, in just over 70, 70 months. So, uh, I think unless and until we see uh, the, uh, some signs from the real economy that things are turning, then those who are trading financial markets are going to be very reluctant uh, to uh, actually commit fresh capital here. So, Nick, from uh, Mario Draghi, we gather two things. One, that growth in, as well as inflation is lower than what he had earlier forecasted. But mm -hmm. two, that that could drive an extension of the liquidity easing mm -hmm. or the support, uh, the liquidity yeah. support that they're giving the markets. Mm -hmm. What should we focus more on? Well, I think the, uh, he's, he's very clearly nailed his colours to, uh, to the inflation mast. And all policy actions are, are driven uh, with a need to get back to the close to but just under 2% target, which the ECB has got. Now, frankly, uh, we can be absolutely sure of one thing, that inflation will not go up unless prices go up. The prices, at the, prices at the moment are not going up. Uh, you look at uh, oil, you look at commodities, uh, you look at all primary products, the prices are either flat or still falling. Now, given that he's absolutely committed uh, to getting back to that target, then it's no surprise to see uh, the uh, fairly uh, punchy rhetoric that we heard yesterday uh, and a commitment, if necessary, uh, to do more, either in terms of size or duration, uh, with respect to quantitative easing. So, yeah, the, the ECB is still going to be printing money. Okay. Uh, well, uh, how would you uh, look forward to the U.S. Uh, jobs data today? Uh, would a good number spell uh, a lot of volatility or would a number below 200,000 give the market a bit of a relief? Uh, relief rally is a strong word, but I don't know another word. Yeah. To, to be honest, I was dreading you asking that question. The simple fact is, the simple fact is that if you told most people in the market what the number was, in other words, if they got it now, they wouldn't know what to do. Oh. Uh, I, think one th I think one thing is uh, pretty certain is that the volatility will continue. And the reason for that, of course, is that on Monday, the U.S. markets are closed. Mm. So we've got the twin prospect on Monday of potentially uh, China withdrawing some of its support for the equity market. That's, that's, that's a theme of local media, mm. that, that some of the state support for local markets might be withdrawn. Mm. And at the same time, we've got a U.S. holiday. So if you did want to lighten up, if you did want to trim your holdings of U.S. Uh, assets, then today's the day you can do it because you won't be able to do it on Monday because the markets are closed. So I think we've got a, a, a liquidity issue and a timing issue which is going to complicate the reaction to payrolls. Yes, this okay. job da jobs data is going to be so difficult to uh, analyze because the strong jobs data will allay concerns about a slowdown in global growth. But on the other hand, it raises the prospect of a fair tightening. Mm -hmm. So you don't know what to uh, focus on. Be happy that growth is not as bad going by the jobs data or worry that um, the Fed's going but to... Nick, is there really a, uh, too much of a chance of a Fed hike at all? How do you approach I, I that event? Um, I, I, think it's, I think it's a very low delta probability. I think there's a very, very slim chance. Uh, here we are, barely 10 days away from the Fed's decision. Uh, we are currently the 4th of September. Let's remind us, ourselves that they sit down on the 16th. Um, so uh, with no, no let up in market volatility for the moment, uh, I think it's highly unlikely that we would see uh, a move from the Fed, almost irrespective of the data. Um, because as your colleague said, the markets are kind of chasing their tails here. If we get strong data that leads to fears of a tightening, we get a market sell-off, which means that tightening can't happen. So we're going to go round and round in circles for every one of the next 12 days. Okay, if we don't get a Fed hike in September when the FOMC meets, do you mm. see a rally for the global equity markets? And will that rally be sold into, given that China concerns still are likely to stay? 
Yeah, I don't think we'll get much of a rally at all because, of course, the reason the Fed wouldn't be raising rates was concern about the global economy. And if you're that concerned about the global economy, whilst they've still got a tightening bias, albeit one which they're unable to deliver on, if you've got concerns about the global economy and the Fed's still got a bias, then it's hard to see why equity markets would rally sustainably in that situation. So no chance that the selling will just get exhausted. Market feels so bombed out that it may not have the energy to sell more. I don't feel there's been what we would call capitulation yet. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we're at that period of, uh, of excessive gloom um, that usually characterizes turning points. Okay. It doesn't yet feel that we are that, uh, at that stage. And for once, that's the bad news, isn't it? Uh, well, uh, what do you do in the meanwhile? You stay in cash, rich cash, dollars, and is uh, emerging markets going to be a bad word, uh, India included? Well, can, there's nothing wrong. I've long maintained that there's nothing wrong with hold, with a zero return. A zero return when prices are falling uh, is actually a positive real return. And the other point to note is if you look at most of the indices, uh, if you'd made zero this year, that would probably make you a top quartile performer. <laughs> Uh, India is down 8.1%, South Korea is down 1.5%, uh, even the Shanghai Composite year-to-date is now down 2.3%. Uh, so zero would have made you a top quartile performer, something to reflect on. You don't always have to make positive returns to look good in this market. Fair point. Uh, that's the situation we are in now, aren't we? Thank you very much, Nick Parsons, for joining us with your thoughts this morning. Okay, so it still doesn't feel like capitulation, so we could continue to see volatility. Or rather, that was what Nick was betting on. We will continue to see volatility. Well, China, of course, is the sore point.